Whether you're just starting or an advanced piper, in today's video we're going to break down how to properly play the Rowan Tree. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, commenting below with any thoughts you might have, and subscribing to the channel. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. So the Rowan Tree here is the second tune in the classic tune breakdown series. Number one was Scotland the Brave, and if you wanted to know more about that, there's a link in the description below and in a card somewhere up here. With this series, the whole idea is that we're going to take a tune and we're going to slow it down immensely, first by four times. So we'll take a 4-4 four, four tune, which is four beats per bar and the quarter note getting the beat, to a 16-4 tune. That really doesn't matter quite so much. We're not going to count out all 16 beats as we go through this. But it does mean that we're taking what was once, say, a quarter note and turning it into a whole note. So a note that once got one beat is now getting four. A note that once got half a beat, like an eighth note, is now getting two beats. And a note that was once only getting a quarter beat is now getting one beat. This allows us to pull everything apart and see exactly, well, how the sausage is made here. And a thing that quite honestly surprised me when I was working through the Scotland the Brave video, starting at four times slower speed, going up to two times slower speed, and then finally full speed, it helped me clean up aspects of that tune that I didn't even know were a little bit messier than I might otherwise like. So this is not just a method for beginners. Even the most advanced player could take these tunes. And if you can play it at this slow speed, cleanly and accurately, it's going to help make sure that when you do play it at full speed, it's nice and, well, awesome, clean, perfect. So in a tune like the round tree here, there are a lot of already long notes. There are quarter notes, dotted quarter notes, and half notes. So those are going to be notes that we're holding for either four beats now, six beats now, or eight beats now. So if we look at the top, we have a G grace note to A on a half note, tied across to an eighth note A. That tie, that symbol means that we're going to hold it across the beat we hear. Then we're going to go up to an eighth note B before we head down to a low G, separate that low G with a D grace note, just the single finger, and that we're on a second low G then, and then we'll lift to a C cleanly without any sort of run or extra business. Something along the lines of... And if we try that along with, say, a metronome, and let's put this at 88. I wouldn't worry about moving on to anything else in the tune until you can do that little bit of business there. Nice, good, and clean. The first time I'd go through this, I wouldn't even worry about this metronome. I don't say that very often, but in this case, given how long some of these notes are, I want to make sure that we're playing everything cleanly and accurately and maybe not worrying quite so much about the time yet this first time around. So we're going to get to the C. We just talked about that first long C, the whole note tied to the half note. Then we're going to do a G grace note to a much shorter C, just a quarter note, before doing yet another low G with a D grace note on low G up to C. That movement is the grip. This is just spelled out. The grip takes its time from the note before it, not after it. So that's why we have such a short B at the top and why we have a short C here because we have to subtract those low Gs that have been spelled out with eighth notes now rather than just looking like grace notes. We had to know where to take the time from. I'm going to go ahead and give this a whirl. No metronome this time. I'm going to make sure that I'm playing all of the relatively short notes cleanly and accurately, but I'm probably not going to hold the long notes quite as long as written here. Not yet at least. And yeah, then we have an E grace note taking us down to the B at the end of the line there. If we did want to play it with a metronome at, say, 88, it would sound something like this. Stick with me, people. I know that felt like forever, but... One, again, it's going to really help build your embouchure, the muscles in your face, get them nice and strong and ready for the pipes if you're not already there. 
It will, of course, eventually help your rhythm, but it's going to show you now exactly how quick the embellishments kind of are in relation to the long notes around them. We're on some of these notes for an awfully long time, and yet we're getting through the grip in somewhat quick order. Moving on to the next bar, we have a G grace note to a C on an eighth note, and then a D grace note on a C. This is a C doubling that has again been spelled out. We're gonna hold that C to the end of beat number two before jumping up to a six beat long E, just the one finger to tap an A between those, holding that for four beats, then up to high A with a sweep of the thumb. That's the high A doubling, again, having been spelled out. Pro tip when playing along with this, try not to think of the tune. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but this is more useful if you're really just trying to read it cleanly off the page rather than implying the things that you might already know how to play. So try to play just what's written in the time it's written. Before we turn on the metronome, let's have a go at this bar. Again, the Quick notes played cleanly. The long notes are going to be held, but probably not for their full duration. And to put that in context with phrase number one. And then finally, with the metronome, this whole line. Once you can play it cleanly, we're gonna move on to playing this faster. So we're not gonna be here all day, but until you can do those grips, those doublings, the things we're looking at here cleanly, don't worry about speeding it up yet. In any case, that'd be an F doubling, but because the note before it was an A, a high A, it's actually what they call a half doubling, a half F doubling. It's kind of a weird name. A half doubling would be a singling, and yet there's still two Fs. They didn't consult with me before they named the embellishment. But in any case, we're gonna just start on an F and then do a G grace note to separate that F, hold it a good long time, head down to an E, a single grace note back up to an F, hold that for a good while. Then we'll do another high A doubling. So high A, sweep of the thumb. Then we're gonna head down to an F and we have another half F doubling right here. So from high A down to the F, G grace note, then a G grace note to E. And here we're gonna tap just the one finger to tap an A between those. And that's the end of this phrase. While there are a few more notes, that G grace note to low A after that is actually beginning the next kind of musical idea or phrase. So we're not gonna worry about that yet. I'm gonna try this line first without the metronome, then with it. To move on from here, we have a G grace note to A, that B, then the grip as spelled out here with the two low Gs of equal length up to the C. That's actually the same as the first full measure and its pickups at the top, so we're not gonna talk about that again. The second half of line three here though, however, is very similar to the second half of line one, but rather than ending up on the high A, we're gonna go up from E to an F doubling. And with the metronome. This E here is going to be the first note taking us into the end phrase of this part, which is gonna be an E to an E doubling, which is starting the fourth line here. So E, G grace note on E, then an F grace note to another E, down to a C without anything, heading into a B doubling, G grace note on B, D grace note on B. Then we're gonna hold that B for a good long time, then a D grace note to C. This one causes people a bit of trouble sometimes. On B, we're gonna lift both and then lower the pointer and pinky, but we do want that pointer finger motion to be pretty quick. 
and not. I don't really want to hear a tonal D there. I want it to be kind of a chirpy little of a D. And then from there, we'll do a G grace note down to an A. And this A, man, you could go make a sandwich or something on this one. Go out and grab a bite because you're going to be on it for eight and a half beats. We're on it for eight beats because this was originally a half note and we're taking it four times slower. So it's been spelled out now to two whole notes tied together. And as I discussed on my video about this poster here and all of my videos on burls, when you're on an A going into the burl, I feel the burl itself should start just after the beat. And I've demonstrated that here by actually tying it across. Again, that's holding it across the beat. So the beginning of beat number nine in this case is actually still on an A before we start sweeping or curling or however you do your burl as shown with those low Gs. I'm gonna play this now, no metronome, holding the notes as needed, making sure everything's clean. And with the metronome. Before we try to move on to playing the first half of this tune at half speed, if you are interested in the second half of Rowan Tree, which has some fun and tricky top hand stuff, go ahead and head down to the link you see here. That's where you can purchase the full version of this tune. With the purchase, you'll get the full tune, all four lines spelled out like this in the 16-4, 8-4, and full speed versions, as well as play along MP3 files in two different tunings, B flat, which is the pitch of this practice channel more or less, or A, which is the pitch of, say, the twist trap and some more modern practice channels that tend to be a little bit deeper, at several different speeds for each one of these time signatures. So go check that out. The support really helps. Quick note, Patreon members of the $5 or Thistle level and above will have access to this breakdown and all future breakdown materials. So consider joining up and becoming a patron of the channel here. Moving on to the half speed version of this tune, we're not going to discuss how to do all this stuff because it's the same, just faster. When playing this at half speed, the B and the grip that are still spelled out are, well, much, much quicker now. We have to play the B and both of those low Gs in three quarters of a beat rather than across a beat and a half as we could earlier. So it's going to go quite quick. Bum, ba, 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 bum. And if we use the counting method I've discussed in other videos, this is actually starting on beat number seven. And to count that out in the counting language would be seven, e and a one, seven, e and a one. I gotta go ahead and bring the metronome down to 80 beats per minute for this right now, just so we can have a chance to hear everything that's going on. With that though, let's go ahead and hear what this first line sounds like at 80. Already you can hear it sounds way more like the round tree now than it did when it was really slow. I'm going to start on the high A now and go into the second line as written here. Again, try to play as best what's written here and not how the tune occurs in your head. This is about fixing the things that might already be going wrong in the tune, so we don't want to double down on them. This is your chance to improve them. Now, the second half at 80. The next version of the tune will be the tune at full speed, but with the ornament still spelled out and 
Oh, that looks a little um, all over the place, if you ask me. We have a bunch of 30-second notes next to things like dotted quarter notes. Kind of confusing, but that is how it would look if we actually spelled the embellishments out with real notes. And you can might see why we choose to use the version as you see down here with the actual embellishments written out as embellishments. They're harder, especially for the beginner to read, but ooh, it's kind of a mess to see that. But in any case, I'm going to look up at this 4-4 spelled out version and give it a go. And then it should sound exactly the same as I just did it when you play the version down here, just is written out differently. There you go, everybody. The round tree spelled out, hopefully helping you make sense of where the grips and various embellishments fall in this tune and how to play them in a more open and organized fashion and manner. And if you're interested in the second half of the tune, both written out like this, as well as MP3 files at several tempos of all of the tune, both first and second part, go ahead and head to the link you see on here or in the description below to purchase that. Again, it really helps support the channel. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving a like and subscribing to the channel. Also wanted to give a big shout out to all of the supporting members of my Patreon community. You'll see names now, folks, scrolling up. These are folks that contribute to the channel monthly. I'd love to add your name to this list. Again, if you support at the $5 or higher level, you'll get all of the learning materials from this Classic Tune Breakdown series as part of your tier level rewards. So check out my Patreon. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a bagpipe merchandise store with things like this Highland Bagpipe Embellishment Tree poster here so you can have access to all of the bagpipe ornaments right at your fingertips or at least within your eyesight if you get this poster. But there's also things like this lovely mug here as well as the entire Command Your Bagpipe line of merchandise. So go over and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you again for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers. <laughs>